Hello, welcome to lesson 17 of Mastering Java. I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. Here we're going to learn something very useful that you'll use all the time. Um, remember that we have done uh, for loops and if statements that contain only one uh, one statement to be executed in those cases. And that's that's useful for lots of lots of things, but there are many, many times when you're going to want to execute multiple statements when you run through a for loop, for instance. So as an example, let's create an integer, we'll call it i, and let's create a for loop, and we can say i uh, is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to 10, and we'll increment, so i equals i plus 1. Now in case you missed it from a, a later section, we can, or a previous entry, we can do this like that, or we can just write i plus plus, that means i equals i plus 1. So in previous lessons, we might have done something like this, system.out.println, right? We might have gone and done something like um, i is equal to, and we'll put a plus sign, and then we'll say i. So let's go and see what this looks like. i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10, because as we loop through, I is being incremented, we're just printing this stuff out. Now this works great because there's only one thing I'm trying to do inside this loop, but what if I'm trying to do something else? Then the way you do that is you create a code block, very easy to do. Um, so you just put a opening bra bracket there, and then you're going to put a closing bracket around on the other side. So now everything for the for loop, everything inside of these brackets here is going to be executed with the for loop. Now the for loop is going to execute fine, exactly as it did before because there's only one statement here and I've I've enclosed it in brackets it's fine so I've got an opening and I've got a closing what if I wanted to make this more complicated what if I want to print something else out let's for instance say let's create an integer called square right and let's say when I go through the loop square is going to be equal to I times I right so basically I'm squaring the loop variable so as I fall through one squared is going to be one two squared is going to be four and so on as I get up to ten ten squared is going to be 100 ten times ten and uh, what I want to do here it's going to say I is equal to blank now let's go over here and let's add to this comma like this and I squared is equal two and I'll come out here and I'll put a plus sign and I'll put square like this all right now there is a semicolon at the end and just to make it a little bit easier to read after this plus I'll just go ahead and hit hit and enter here so that you can read the whole thing without uh, going anywhere else all right so make sure you understand what's going on inside of this for loop I've got two things going on I'm taking the loop variable I'm squaring it storing it into some other variable and when I print it out I'm going to get the square as well. So let's go ahead and say that i is equal to 1 and i squared is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i squared is equal to 4. So you can see as you go down here 7 squared is 7 times 7 is 49, 10 squared is 100. This is the kind of thing that you wouldn't be able to do unless you created a code block. So code blocks are, are, are very useful for any kind of control structure like a for loop, also if statements, uh, and the like. So later on we're going to get to while loops and all kinds of other looping constructs. Just remember you can always put multiple statements here. I can do anything I want. If I want to do something here I can say uh, system.out.println uh, and I can say like this, I can say I love the moon something like this and then I can do a backslash n to give me a new line after I do that. So every time I loop through I'm going to print I'm going to get an extra free line at the end. It's telling me I have an error here, and that's highlighted there. I just forgot a quick semicolon. That's very common. Go ahead and run it again, and let me go ahead and just scroll up, and you can see i is equal to 1, and i squared is equal to 1. I love the moon with a blank line, and so on. So that's just inserted in there, and you can see that you really do need a code block to pull this off. So this is a simple example, but there are many cases when you have multiple things to happen instead of a for loop, and close them in blocks. Let me get rid of all of this stuff here, and let's go ahead and do something totally different. Let me clear this out. Let me show you how you might do this for an if statement, or a series of if statements. All right, let's declare the integer variable a, and let's declare it equal to 4, right? 
Now let's go and create an if statement. If a is equal to 4, which in this case it is going to be equal to 4, so we're, it's going to evaluate to true, let me open a curly brace here. Now watch what happens when I press enter to come down. A new closing bracket is created for me by Eclipse. It's just trying to help me not to forget my closing braces there. So it's going to insert them for you a lot of times. So, so just kind of be aware of that. That's a nice feature. So if a is equal to 4, then what I'll say is a is equal to, actually let's do it like this. Let's say system.out.print. Actually let's do it like this. Let's say a is equal to a plus 5, like this. So in this case, we'll say system.out.println, like that. And then we'll go and we'll say a was equal to 4. Now it is equal to space, and then I'll put a plus sign, um, a. So basically what's happening here is I'm going to jump through the loop, or I, I'm sorry, jump through the if statement. If a is equal to 4, then I'm going to add 5 to it, and I'm going to print this statement out here. A was equal to 4, now it's equal to 9 because I added this here. Now let me skip down under this if statement because this closing bracket defines the close of the if statement here. Let's do another if statement. If uh, A was equal to 10, let me open a bracket, let me come out here, and it's going to be a double equal always when I'm doing ifs. Open a bracket, enter, I've got my closing curly brace already created. A is equal to a plus 10, let's say. And we'll go system.out.println like this. And I'll say a was equal to 10. Now it is equal to, and over here, I'll print the value of a. So what do you think is going to happen when I run this guy? It still prints a was equal to 4, now it's equal to 9 because originally I had it equal to 4. This if statement was executed, this if statement was completely skipped because it wasn't true. But if I go up here and I change this to the variable, uh, make the variable equal to 10, then this if statement will be skipped. So let's see if that happens. a was equal to 10, now it is equal to 20 because this guy was executed. What do you think is going to happen if I choose a value that's different than that? Let's choose 5. Go ahead and hit this guy. Nothing at all happens because this if statement is skipped and this if statement is skipped and the program terminates. So we'll go ahead and change it back to 4 just because we want to see some nice output. And that's basically all I want to show you in this lesson. The, the main thing is if you're doing an if statement that requires more than one uh, statement inside the body of the if, then you need to enclose it with opening and closing curly braces. Same thing is true of for loops. Same thing is true of lots and lots of other constructs we'll talk about later. Uh, just remember you can always group them like that. Every time you have an opening curly, you have to have a corresponding cur closing curly. Eclipse will try to warn you if you forget. It will also try to insert them in some cases. But if you get errors and, and you see little red dots on the margin here, then you need to go back and look at your closing bra curly braces and make sure you have them all in your code.